is greater. God is greater than the earth. He's greater than my fears. He is greater than my failings. He's faithful to the years. God is greater than the enemies. In every human plan. In every of God will always stand. He's the God of glory, King of majesty. God is greater. God is greater. The Lord creator, the God of wonders, high above all things. God is greater. Lord creator, the God of wonder is high above all things. Yes, he's the king of kings. Sing that again. God is greater. He's greater than our problems. Amen. He's greater than our fears. He is greater than our failings. And he's faithful through the years. And God is greater than the enemies. In every human plan. Every word of God will always stand. He's the God of glory, the God of glory, King of majesty. God is greater, yes, he is our Lord creator. The God of wonder is high above all things. Amen. Glory to God. You delivered me from darkness unto light. You've given my soul abundant life. Majestic is your name. My lips shall sing your praise, and my heart 
watch him cry aloud and say, you're my righteousness, you're my strength, you're my redeemer, and my lips shall sing your praise. I lift my hands to you to bless your name, oh God, I surrender. I surrender, I make my life a sacrifice, oh praise, oh you deliver me, from darkness to light, you give me my soul, abundant life, majestic is your name. My lips shall sing your praise, and my heart shall cry aloud, and say, yes, you're my righteousness, my righteousness, and you're my strength, you're my redeemer, and my lips shall sing your praise, give my hands to you. sacrifice of oh, praise created me created me a clean yes indeed and we knew a writer with the created God Mitchell, Pastor Greg Mitchell, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Pastor Pastor Day there in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We want to pray for past, my pastor, Pastor John Dixon. Pray for Eric Long, who's preaching the gospel in Stockton, California this morning. Amen. 
Pray for me and my wife here in St. Louis. And again, for this work here in this place, that God would touch these hearts and souls and lives here in this place. Amen. We're partnering with a couple of couples out in, in uh, uh, Missouri. Uh, uh, um, the Bells. <laughs> I have to look at the thing in Maryland Heights. I want to pray for Pastor Bells and Pastor Samaniego there in Hazelwood or in Ferguson. And we've got Franco and Anna coming out in May. Yeah. to Wentzville, so we're going to be tearing it up here in St. Louis for Jesus Christ. Amen. You pray with us. You partner with us. We would appreciate all the prayers that we can get. Let's go before God this morning on behalf of first responders who are, who are tasked with our safety. They're tasked with helping us. Amen. Pray for our missionaries, Ray and Sally Sanchez, John Ashley in Sutro, China, Adele and Archie, and Archie Brown in India. Let's lay hold of God on their behalf that God will continue to move there and continue to help them there. Pray for our president because he desperately needs prayer for this country because we're so divided. Amen. We need to pray that God would move mightily upon us. You have a need in your heart. You have a need out there in your heart. You can signify that here yes. with an uplifted hand because we all need something from Jesus Christ. So everybody's hand should be going up. You acknowledge that before God and you speak those out in prayer. As I open this up in prayer, I'm looking at my wife now to see if there's something else I forgot because that's usually the case, amen? <laughs> Let's go before God in prayer, amen? Oh, Father God, God, we thank you, God, your love and grace and mercy. Magnify yourself this morning in this service, God. In hearts and lives, God, use this, God, to touch hearts, God, to touch lives, Lord God, to reach folks, God. Let this tool of evangelism tonight have power and strength and move forward by the Holy Ghost. God, we pray, God, that, that you would help us in this area, God, that you would pour out your spirit upon St. Louis and upon all those, my God, that are in need of you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to Hallelujah. Oh, God is a good God this morning. We want to just say hello and welcome. I'm going to go ahead and God bless you. God bless you my everybody. song service team. <laughs> Should I say that? You're alive. Glory, hallelujah. We have Sunday morning services starting at 1030. We try and be here about 930 for prayer because if we're not praying, then there's some kind of issue. Amen. Amen. We, we, we also have a 6 p.m., uh, 6 o'clock in the evening service, Wednesday service at 7 o'clock. We've got Bible study every first and third Friday of the month. Amen. We're in the book of Romans. I believe we're in chapter 9. Amen. Amen. Outreach is going to be on Saturday. I know it says 1130, but it's going to be at 1 o'clock on Saturday morning. Not sure. We're going to hit some parking lot somewhere, talk to some people, call some people. We're going to follow up on some people. We're going to try and figure out something to do in this time of six feet of separation. Yes. I'm going to have to throw the gospel at people or something. <laughs> Amen. God will find a way. Amen. The time of the service, offering time. Amen. God loves you this morning. And he loves you so much that he, 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 he wants to lay hold of your heart this morning. I, I heard a little... Uh, 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 illustration the other morning about a guy who takes his son to McDonald's. And he buys his son a Happy Meal and they're sitting down to eat and they're both kind of pretty happy with what's going on there. And, and dad reaches over to grab a French fry from his son's box. And this eight-year-old boy slaps his father's hand and says, stay off my fries, dad. And the dad sits back and says, son, I bought you those fries. I gave you those fries. You wouldn't have those fries without me. See, and that's what we do to God. We, God gives us the power to create wealth. He gives us the power to work and to, and to make these things. He, he, you know, if he could get money through you and said he can get money to you, it's all God's. Just be faithful this morning and giving back to God what's already his. Plus, maybe give him a little something extra this morning, amen? So you're in this place or you're at home. You make sure to give. We're going to figure out some sort of way if this works, how you can give it to our ministry and help us here. If you want to help support us here, we would, we would definitely appreciate it. We haven't got it set up yet, but by Wednesday, we're hoping to be live streaming to have all that stuff set up. So you just stay faithful to what God's doing where you're at, and we'll stay faithful to what God's doing from here. Amen? With that being said, get your monies ready. Glory to God. Let me pray. 
Father God in heaven, we thank you, God, your loving grace and mercy. We thank you, Heavenly Father, all that you are, God, all that you're doing. We ask that you will bless the gift in this place and also the giver. In Jesus' glorious name, amen. some folks watching this morning. Amen. I'm sweating. Lord God, if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles at home, turn with me to Luke chapter 17. <sighs> We're going to preach the gospel this morning. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. In the 80s, music was good in the 80s. I mean, it was better in the 60s and 70s, but Music was good in the 80s, too. There was a group that I used to like called the Talking Heads. Quiet as it's kept. You know, you don't have to tell everybody I like the Talking Heads, because <laughs> I'll be mocked. <laughs> but they had a very popular song back in the day, and it was called Once in a Lifetime. I'm sure you've heard it. I love that song. The hook on that song repeated many times, the same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. I'm going to preach a sermon tonight. It's same as it was then. See, the song was about wasting time with the same old pursuits, not taking stock into what's really important in life. They're you know, just uh, letting the days go by, it says. Same as it ever was. Turn with me to Luke chapter 17, verse 26. The Bible says, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your divine direction and guidance. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, that you understand all, God. We ask this morning, Heavenly Father, that your Holy Ghost would dwell within this place and that you would help us this morning. Give us divine direction and guidance. In Jesus' glorious name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So what the writer, what does the writer mean this morning when he says, as in the days of Noah, what he's saying is that men in the days of Noah, or before the, the flood in Noah's day, behaved just like the men are behaving today. Things are, are, the, are, are, are going on as they do every day. He's making a point here that the days of Noah, there was uh, uh, accelerated sinfulness. So I'm just walking out of the camera shot, and I'm just not used to this. <laughs> Men are interested in their own pleasures and their own pursuits, and they're not concerned this morning with the lack of a coming judgment. So it is today, just like in the days of Noah, pursuing their own gains, not concerned about anyone else or anything else or the coming judgment. Amen. What I'm going to talk about this morning an acceleration of sinfulness. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, the Bible said, There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, and the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. We see that in society today, amen. It's a lack of moral standards, a, a desire for righteousness, or at least very little. There's no uh, uh, desire for this morning. See, these are indeed perilous times that we're involved in. I, I was talking to a guy just last week. And man, I, I, I saw him dragging himself across the street and 
you know, he's dragging his leg behind him, so I pull over to give him a ride because he looked destitute. He's got a broken leg. I said, man, what happened to your leg? He said, uh, a guy hit him in the leg with a pipe a couple days earlier and, and broke his shin. And he's dragging himself across the street, and he's telling me that he's homeless. And then he says this, which just blew my mind. He said he was dumpster diving because he's got this big old fat lip and his black eye, and he's just all jacked up. And he says he was dumpster diving for some food, and a guy robbed him, hit him in the face with a brick. So these are indeed perilous times, beloved. Just like the scribe to Timothy, it says this, 2 Timothy 3, 1, this, these perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. I gave this man a ride. I was hoping he'd be here this morning. Maybe he'll be here this evening. Yeah. But what the writer's saying here in Timothy is that sin abounds. Many are going about the day-to-day -day as though it's all good. There's no worries. They robbed him while he was dumpster diving for food. Amen. Blinded, no doubt, by the enemy this morning, poo-pooing the signs of the times. Choosing to be oblivious to the eternal. That's what we're doing today in society. Mm. Ignoring the truth of the gospel. Amen. Come on. In 1903, the Wright brothers, you know, planes, first flight. <laughs> the Wright brothers. In 1903, there was the first time they flew. They flew 120 feet. And in the excitement, they texted their sister or telegraphed, I guess you would say back then. They telegraphed their sister, hey, we flew. And they were excited. It says, oh, and by the way, the message said, oh, and by the way, we'll be home for Christmas. Amen. So the, the sister being excited about their brothers flying the 120 feet, she runs all the way to the newspaper of that little town that they lived in and handed him the note to the editor of the note. The editor reads the note and he says this. He said, oh, how nice. The boys will be home for Christmas. He completely missed the point that someone flew, yeah. that they built a contraption that had flown 120 feet. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believeth not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Beloved, do you want to be about the times, be, are, 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 the times being the same as it ever was? I can't go a day with the people that I work in when somebody doesn't say, when you ask them how they're doing, oh, same old, same old. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. same time, different day, or whatever it is they say. Everybody's living day to day, doing the same old things. It's even in the news story in 1969 about Hurricane Camille. You know, we, we talk about fake news, we talk about the lying of the media. Camille was one of the most powerful hurricanes to ever hit the United States. And there was a story circulated about these there was a luxury apartment complex and the story goes that they were having a party there one night during the Hurricane Camille and they refused to leave. They refused to be evacuated from that. You know, so instead of, instead of uh, 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 leaving the apartment complex, they decided to party and to have a good time during the hurricane. All of them were wiped, were wiped out, mm. except for one. That was fake news. That was a news story that was made up. See, the Richmond apartments had indeed been devastated by Camille, but there was no hurricane party that had been thrown. And that's what's going on today. We're being deceived yeah. into thinking we're okay. We're being lulled to sleep into thinking everything is all right. Come on. Beloved, there's a storm coming. Yes. Amen. Can I tell you something, my friend? There's a storm coming, and we need to for when Jesus comes for his people. Amen. Let's talk about the approaching storm. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 7, the Bible says it was the storm. Camille was the, 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 the strongest storm at the time that this country's ever hit. This is the, the news story. Part of this is, this is the true portion, and then I'm going to go right back into the, the lie of the story. 
But this is what was printed. It says, it was 10.15 p.m. when the front wall of the storm came ashore and scientists clocked Camille's wind speed at more than 205 miles per hour, the strongest on record. Raindrops hit with the force of bullets and waves off the coast crested between 28 and 22 and 28 feet. News reports later showed that the worst damage came in a little settlement of motels, go-go bars, and gambling houses known as Haas Christian, Mississippi, where some 20 people were killed at, at a hurricane party in the Richie Lou apartments. Nothing was left of that three-story structure but the foundation. The only survivor was a five-year-old boy found clung clinging to a mattress the following day. That second part of that story was a, was a lie, and it went viral for those times. Beloved, the rapture's coming. We need to prepare ourselves for the truth. Christ is going to return, and the world needs to be put on notice this morning. See, the problem is there's a lack of concern for the eternal, a lack of concern for one another and where we're going to end up, amen? Most are concerned with what's going on in their lives right now, today, not what's to come. They want to hear the good things. You can have the, the best life now kind of things. That's what they want to hear, my friend. But can I tell you something? The good things is where we're going to spend eternity. That's the single most important decision or choice you're going to ever make in your life. You need to be researching that. Second Timothy 4. They will not. But after their own lust, themselves. And they shall turn the truth and shall be turned to fables. See, but we need to be known, we need to know the truth, we need to be told the truth this morning, not turned unto faith. 2 Timothy 4 1 says, I charge thee therefore, God and the Lord Jesus, who shall judge the appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, rebuke and doctrine. Amen. The fact that we have an active savior, savior. Jesus is involved this morning, amen? Amen. Genesis 6, 5 says, God saw that the wickedness of the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was continually. The Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. See, we have an active savior this morning. He knows what's happening. He knows our hearts. He's, he's not caught in the dark. He's not being fooled about anything, and he's given us the truth. He's told us in advance. See, God was busy in Noah's day, and he was busy in our day, too. He's not sitting dormant. He's reaching out for you. And not now. See, he was observing, cataloging the activities. He was taking stock in the world's condition. I'm not. This place with your eternity destiny your life this morning. Proverbs 15 3 says the eyes of the Lord beholding the evil and the good. God was disturbed by what he saw in Noah's day. Amen. About Noah and his he was an able spokesman for God. For 120 years he was an able spokesman. He preached the coming judgment for years but he didn't have a single convert save his family. So even while God was planning judgment, even while God was, was, was moving forth in judgment, he was still reaching out to sinners. God can never but instead he gave them 120 years to make up their minds. He's given you and I a lifespan this morning to accept Jesus Christ. But you know what? We don't know when he's coming back. So if you're concerned about the here and now, the Bible says uh, 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 that Christ came to give us life and to give us more abundantly. So if you're concerned about the here and now, he promises us in Matthew that he's going to take care of that. He's going to cover us. He's got our back. We have need of all these things. But see, the of God and his righteousness and all these things was enabled. And, and, and no one took him seriously. I bring the message of judgment this morning. Take me seriously when I tell you God. Jesus 
Christ to save, God is coming back. April 15th, 1912. The Titanic set I know you know where I'm going with this. It was advertised as being unsinkable. But you know, most people didn't even really think about you know, whether or not it was sinkable. That was not a selling point for the trip. The selling point with the trip was the luxury, the pleasure, the hedonistic uh, uh, availability of it all. So they weren't prepared for what was about to take place. Are we prepared for what's about to take place? Come on. You and I. First Thessalonians 5 1. Seasons You have no need that I write unto you for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. He said this. I tell you something, if it's on the water, we ask for for what is transgression and disobedience received. It? How shall we neglect which at the first began to be spoken by the word and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? We need to pay attention to the word of understanding levels out for us. See, anytime we tune out God's message to us, we put our souls in great danger. Hebrews chapter 12, 25 says, See that you give ear to his voice, which comes to you. For those whose ears were shut to the voice which came to them on earth did not go free from punishment. What chance have we of going free if we give no attention to him? Amen? Amen. See, one dark, rainy night, a salesman a flat tire. He's on a lonely road and often he sees a light. But there's dismay, you know, he had no he had no lug wrench tires and so he decides he's gonna walk up to that house where he sees the light. It's a quite a bit away, but he's thinking surely the, the lug wrench, but but would he even come to the door when I knock? It's dark, it's late. And if he did would he be furious at me being at the no. He says, finally, the man reached the house frustrated and drenched. He banged on the door, probably like a cop. <laughs> Who's there? A voice called out from, the, from a window overheard. You know good and well who it is, you keep your old blood wrench. <laughs> I wouldn't borrow it if it was the last blood wrench in the county. See, that's what we do. We take all these, we, we, we choose not to hear, we choose not to adhere to the things of God. You know, we go on our own understanding and we think, well, that just can't happen to me. We need to follow the truth of the gospel this morning. Take heed to the warnings in the word of God this morning. See, that won't get your tire changed, beloved, not adhering to God. <laughs> There's a storm coming. Amen. Amen. And you need to get on the boat. Amen. God's been reaching out for years to get you in the boat. Why don't you just adhere? Why don't you just listen? Why don't you just give yourself to Jesus Christ to help you? Amen. That's all I got this morning. By kind of quickly, amen. But let's have every head bowed. And every eye closed. If you're at home this morning, you you're watching this on the uh, on on Facebook Live. I'm sorry if it cut in and out on you and all those stuff. We're just trying this out new. By Wednesday, hopefully, we'll have all the the things, all the all, everything kinked out. But in the interim, Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, so that you would have an opportunity to have fellowship with Him. Amen. Be concerned about where you're going to spend eternity. If you died today, where would you go? Would you make heaven or hell? And be honest with yourself. Because many times, like I was saying earlier, we're not honest with ourselves. It's been that way since the beginning of time. We're not honest with ourselves in the conditions of our heart. God wants to help you this evening. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, then you're not saved. And you're not going to make heaven your home. Amen? Amen. So you're, you're there at home and, or you're in this place and, and, and you want to have that relationship with Jesus Christ. You want to be forgiven. You want to be cleansed. You want to make your reservations in heaven. 
then you can show Jesus, show God your hand this morning and say, hey, I, wa I want you to pray for me, Pastor. I want you to help me. I want you to, I want you to help me this morning to live for you. I understand that you're, you're sitting in front of a TV or in front of a computer or in front of your phone, but you too can pray. End up in this place, we're going to have a, a, a mass prayer because God can honor that too if you mean it in your heart, amen? Yes, amen. So stand with me and repeat this prayer after me. Father God, Father God, have mercy on my soul. Have mercy on my soul. Come in unto me. Come in unto me. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Be my God. Be my God. Be my Savior. I believe that you died. I believe that you died. For my sin. From the grave. That you rose from the grave. For my salvation. I thank you for your plan. Thank you for your plan of redemption and restoration. And restoration. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you said that prayer this morning, you can get in contact with us on Facebook and let us know so that we can say it there too. So